In this video, we're going to solve an example of an RL circuit. This particular version is a little bit more complicated than some of the other ones. We have two independent sources and a dependent source we're going to have to deal with here. Regardless, we follow the same procedure. We look at what happens right before the switch, what happens right after the switch, and then at infinity. So before the switch, we're in position one for a long time. That means we're in steady state. So we'll draw the circuit. And in this particular case, we have an inductor. An inductor in steady state is a short. So this is our circuit here. We want to find the current going through the inductor at zero minus here. So let's see here. We know the this is ground, so this is 12 volts because it's hooked up to the voltage source right there. So then we can go ahead and figure out. So this is 2IA here. Well, based on this and Ohm's law, IA is going to be 12 or 4 is 3 amps. So 2 times that would be 6 volts. Now because of the way the dependent source is set up there, that means that if this is ground at the bottom here, there's going to be a 6 volt drop. So we're at negative 6 volts right there which means then the current going through there, the IL of zero minus, is starts at 12 volts, ends at negative six volts, divided by six ohms, and we are gonna get a three amps there. So that means our initial current through the inductor is three amps. Oh, and I just realized this was all at T equals zero minus, right? This is right before the switch happened. Now we're going to go to the right out of the switch happens t equals zero plus. So that means the switch was in position one. Now it's moving to position two. So we now have the 36 volt connected instead of the 12 volt. We also have this two ohm resistor in series. We're going to have four ohms here. IA coming down. Then we have our inductor, which is no longer short because a change happened, which means we're now in transient mode, not steady state mode. And we get this here. Now we know that the initial current is not going to change because it's a current through an inductor. So current through inductor cannot change instantaneously. If it was three amps before the switch happens, it's still going to be three amps after the switch happens. Now in this particular problem, we are looking for V zero of T, which is not the same necessarily from before the switch and after the switch. Voltages across resistors are not necessarily going to stay the same. They can change instantaneously. However, in this particular case, since this resistor is in series with the inductor, that means the current through the resistor will not change because it's the same as the current through the inductor, which means the voltage across the resistor also would not have happened to change. And by Ohm's law, since it's three amps, we know that V zero of zero plus is going to be 18 volts. Okay, so that gives us our initial voltage for the function we're trying to find. Now we need to find the value at infinity here. So this is the, at infinity, so the switch has already happened. And we are going to be once again in steady state, which means that the inductor becomes a short. And here we have this circuit and we want to find out what is the voltage across this resistor in this case here at infinity. 
So, well, we can do maybe a node voltage type problem here. Call this V on top, put the ground at the bottom here. So then we would have V minus 36 over two plus V minus zero over four plus V minus a negative two IA over six equals zero. Then we're gonna realize that IA is V over four. We can go ahead and, and plug that in here. Uh, if I separate this out, I have V over six plus the two cancel that make it IA over three. But IA over three is gonna be V over 12. Go ahead and multiply everything through by 12 here. That's gonna give me a six V minus 216 plus three V plus two V plus V equals zero. So uh, three, six, that's gonna be 12 V is 216. And if we go ahead and divide that there, we're gonna get 18 volts. So that means our V zero of infinity is also 18 volts. So we have our, our value at zero, we have our value at infinity. Sorry, I apologize for that. That's a, it is 18, but that's actually not V zero. Slight mistake, at the conclusion there. So we know that the V, the node voltage here is 18, but that's not the same as V zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit further analysis here. If this is 18, then the current coming down through there is going to be 4.5 which means two times that is gonna be a nine volt here. So we're at negative nine volts on that side of it. And then V zero of infinity is the difference. It's the V minus the negative nine volts. So we are going to have 18 plus nine is 27 volts. That's our V zero of infinity. The last thing we need is our time constant, which means we need our equivalent resistance, our Thevenin resistance here. Well, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem because we have that dependent source. So we need to try to figure out what it's going to be. So we're looking for the Thevenin resistance based on the two nodes of the inductor there. Well, I can do a VOC and an ISC We'll be using this circuit here. Find our VOC and ISC. Well, VOC is easy because if that isn't open there, then there's no current flowing, nothing connected, which means all the rest of this on the right side is also nothing going on between there, the six ohm resistor. So that means over here, on my one loop there, I have 36 volts dropping over a total of six ohms, that means I'm gonna have six amps going through there. If I have six amps going through there, then this is going to be 24 volts. However, six amps means this is two times that, it's going to be 12 volts down here. And so based on this analysis here, we have a node of 24 volts we have a node of negative 12 volts, so VOC by subtracting them would be a 36 volt VOC. If I then want to find my ISC, that's the current that happens if this becomes a short circuit, lo and behold, we actually already figured that out over here, because in this case, it was a short circuit. And let's see, we know this is gonna be 18 volts on top. This is negative nine, so there's a 20 volt drop across the six ohm resistor. And so this current here is going to be, uh, let's see here. It's gonna be 27 over six. That's gonna be 4.5 amps here. 
And so now we have our ISC is 4.5 amps, which means my R thevenin is VOC divided by ISC. It's going to be eight ohms. So that means my tau, which is L over R, is three Henry's over eight ohms. That's 0.375 seconds. So we can finally figure out our K1 and K2. V0 of infinity is gonna be your K1, is going to be 27. V0 of zero is K1 plus K2. It's supposed to be 18. As we know, K1 is 27, K2 is negative nine. And after a final answer, after all that work, it's gonna be 27 minus nine e to the negative t over 0.375 and our answer is in terms of volts. So you see there's a lot going on in this problem here. There is the general idea of zero minus, zero plus, and infinity that we use every time we have a first order circuit. There is the same standard formula k1 plus k2 e to the negative t over tau. That part's fine. However, Finding our zero plus and our infinity, we're a bit more involved this time. Node voltage, mesh current, whatever you want to use. Then finding our R7 was also more involved because of the dependent source. So all in all, I would consider this a particularly challenging problem, but hopefully all the steps we did make sense here.